After we've drawn up the plan form of the actual wing panel onto the pink foam, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the wing panel from the foam. So I've already laid the wire on the line, and now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on with the rheostat, adjust my temperature until it starts cutting, and you'll see the wire start to drop just from gravity when it reaches the right temperature. And I'm going to go ahead and catch it after it falls off. That way it does cut a straight line. Go ahead and go to the next cut, which is going to be the top side. I'm going to replace it back on the line, and I'm going to turn it back on. And if your bow is moving back and forth swinging, you need to kind of stabilize it. And then just get in the middle, and always try to position your bow in the center of your foam, because the heavier side will make it cut crooked. Remove it, shut your machine off. Once you have both your wing panels, the ends trimmed off, you want to go ahead and lay your template back on the wing panels and go ahead and mark them at this time uh, just so you know which wing is going to be which so when you're laying your templates you don't get confused. So I'm going to put left leading edge and then I'm going to put right leading edge. And uh, that's pretty much all I do to mark it. That way when I put the templates on, I know where the leading edge is. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, Spray 77 from my cabinet. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, spray, spray my uh, 3M77 onto the end course on both ends. At the same process, I'm going to go ahead and spray both the templates. I'll just spray it on top of the foam. This won't be affected in any way. You're just going to do a light one pass coat and uh, let it tack up a little bit. If you let it tack up a little bit, you'll be sure to get a good stick when you go ahead and place your airfoil. Normally what I will do is I made marks on my template and I'll go ahead and uh, come up a quarter inch from the bottom. And you can take a pen before you do this process and uh, go ahead and uh, put your airfoil on the end. That's a positive template. And I'm going to go ahead and put the root on. That's giving me plenty of uh, airfoil that hangs off the end. So on the trailing edge, if I happen to come off faster, I'll still have some place to go with the wire because you don't want to stop the wire or have it fall off because you'll eat this whole bottom side of the edge with the hot wire. So then I usually keep some direct pressure on it for a little bit, make sure the templates are... Then I'll use the other airfoil, use that as a spacer to keep my airfoil off or your, your workbench. And I'll put two lead weights on it to keep constant pressure. And then we're, we're ready to cut. I'll usually line it up so I have an even amount flush with the back of the table and then when I start cutting I'll go over the top and another easy way would be to graduate your uh, put stations on the end on the root and the tip and one of the reasons I saved this piece of foam here was to get my temperature right on the cut it, you have to have a piece of foam that's similar to the length of your airfoil because the amount of wire that goes into the foam is actually cooled when it goes through the foam. If you have a, just a one inch piece, you're not going to get a consistent reading on your temperature of your cut. Turn it up gradually until I start seeing it cut the temperature that I want. I don't want it to just fall through. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set my hot wire onto the ends of each side. And I do like to push on this. I don't like to try to, it would be pretty hard to keep on this uh, bottom side of this template and then uh, keep constant pressure across the top. Right now I can keep a nice even pressure. I'm going to go ahead and turn the hot wire on. Make sure your templates are all still on. And I'm going, I went ahead and started my wire, try to keep it even. I'm just going to go ahead and keep even pressure on it. I will have to go faster on this side. On, once I 
start cutting because it will change your temperature of your cut. And it will change your airfoil. So I'm trying to judge it. I'm going a little bit slower on this side and I'm keeping a little bit more pressure on this side. I usually keep this probably about 40 degrees. Right now it's pretty easy to uh, keep that constant pressure down on your template. to the leading edge on both sides right now. I've got to hit the leading edge on both sides at the same time. I'm keeping a constant pressure back up and I'm pulling it slightly to me and I'm going to try to pick up the speed on my root panel been a constant pressure up against the bottom of this template coming back at me. It does take a little bit of practice. Don't think your first couple of panels are going to be perfect cuts. Both take a little bit of light sanding. I haven't been cutting this uh, single pass cuts very long. This is probably about my seventh airfoil now. And I'm just trying to not stall this side of the wire. that's what this tail will be for because I'm going a little bit faster and this airfoil is so much shorter on this side I'll be able to come off onto this tail and stop it on this and that will give me my straight line across the trailing edge. I just keep even pressure and that bow is just kind of coming on its own through the airfoil. You don't want to pull too tight because your wire could possibly snap just from the tension and the heat. Getting ready to pull off on the tip. I've still got about an inch and a half to go on the, uh, you see it start to exit. You want to keep that moving across the trailing edge. You don't want to stop because you will eat through the trailing edge at this point. right here, but uh, that's your root airfoil right there, and that's your tip. We do have a light ridge here that we'll go ahead and get sanded off, and we'll have to go ahead and uh, end it there. both your airfoils put together.